My friends are always pranking me. You have to be just as cruel with cruel people. Or did you think evil could be defeated by kindness? I have an opinion about that. If you think you can talk me out of it, listen to my story first because you'll see that I'm actually on the side of good. You'll understand why I live this way and why in the end I did what the people around me deserved. I had been a shy and vulnerable boy since I was a child. I didn't socialize much with anyone and I always tried to stay in the shadows to take a place of quietness and get through another day. My comfort zone was quiet and deserted and I was not bored by it. Although my classmates thought otherwise, they felt it was their duty to bring color into my life, only their intentions were not good. Bud, Jack and Ron were a gang of rich, dumb guys in my class. They bullied me every day. They called what they did a prank, but it didn't change the essence of the bullying. I didn't have rich parents and I didn't like anything in my life. I mean, things. So I wore the same jeans, shirt, t-shirt and sneakers more often. I was just comfortable. I wore an old cassette player and big headphones. Don't even ask me where I got that. I just liked it, that's all. It took my mind off things, off conversations. I didn't hear people calling me names and laughing at my player. And it was already a blessing. My sister gave it to me. She fixed it and gave it to me. Because of my lactose intolerance, I carried special lactose-free milk with me and drank it during recess. That day, Jack bumped into me at the entrance and my Tetra bag broke. I was upset because I was thirsty, but immediately Ron came over and handed me one. He said, Sorry, Jack is clumsy and my sister drinks milk like you. She left it in my bag. I don't want you to lug it around. Can you pick it up? His kindness seemed genuine to me and I said thank you and walked into class where we had dictation in English. I quickly drank my milk and got ready. The teacher came in and we started writing. I felt a strange tension in my stomach. My stomach was about to explode, but why? And then I caught Bud's eye. He was looking and smiling and he showed me his milk, the regular lactose milk, and I got it. Those jerks poured it for me instead of lactose free. I wanted to ask to go to the bathroom, but the teacher wouldn't finish dictating. Finally, I just got up from my chair, but it was too late. A loud, just the loudest fart in the world came out. The excellent Angela sitting behind me almost fainted, and Ron almost threw up. I was so mad at them that I wanted to pounce, but the teacher told me to go to the bathroom. I didn't go back to class, I just went outside and sat waiting for my mum to pick me up. The lesson was over. I wasn't going to hit the guys because I didn't fight back. And that's what life has taught me. You either hit until the end or you don't start. All the guys had already left and I was watching the time on my phone. It's weird. I think I got out of school a long time ago, but time drags on so slowly. And then I noticed the clock on the door of a roadside cafe and realized that I stood at the bus stop for two hours and my mum had never come. What's more, my last school bus had left. A message came from Ron. Walk. They're the ones who set the time on my phone. Apparently, while I was apologizing for the fart. Bastards. It took me three and a half hours to get home. I was so angry, but I couldn't do anything about it because my sister was telling me that violence wasn't the answer. As soon as I walked into the house, my father greeted me. He could already tell by my soiled pants that I was in trouble again, and he hated it more than anything. When are you going to start acting like a man? When? I'm ashamed of you. You're like a girl. My shame, you wimp. You're not my son. It's fucking punishment. Dad usually slapped me in the face. But this time mum stepped in and stood up for me. Dad went outside and I asked why mum hadn't come to get me. You sent me a message not to come. Supposedly you want to go with your friends on the bus. Why? Did something happen? What took you so long? And your phone is off, my mum asked. I said briefly, it sat down, I'm in the shower and went for a bath. I always bathed in hot water because my father brought me up with cold water. He thought it made my health tougher and if I got sick, I got sicker. One day I couldn't stand it and asked my mum with tears in my eyes, why won't she leave him? He's a monster and he heard it. But he didn't touch me. He blamed my mother for my wrong upbringing. They kicked me out of the room and closed the door. I called the police when my mother was screaming and my dad made me lie to them that it was a prank to tell them that I was ashamed and it wouldn't happen again. Then one of the cops said he recognized me from a YouTube video. You're that guy from YouTube that your friends are pranking. And you're good, you're a good actor, he said and left. It was a joke to them, but it was the reality to me. And it was like this. Not all children have good families and not all children are loved by their real parents. If that's not the case with you, you are very lucky. Just remember my story guys, just remember and compare. My dad told me to get water for him and slip sleeping pills in the soda he bought on the way. 
When dad fell asleep, mum and I quickly packed our things up and bailed out of the house to my aunt's house. Sometimes we did that, but this time he didn't know our address because my aunt had brought a new apartment and wouldn't tell anyone about it but us. On the way I texted my sister not to call home and that we were now living somewhere else and my phone went dead. Things got better on the one hand, but on the other it was the same. Already in the morning I was sitting with my head stuck in the toilet because Bud wanted me to. He was videotaping and Ron and Jack were filming and I had to say it was my idea for the stamina prank. At some point Bud's car keys fell out of his pants. I managed to get them for myself. I was planning something, a revenge plan. I was dragged out of the toilet and Bud made me repeat after him the words, I'm nothing, I'm a schmuck, I'm a wimp and so on. I couldn't stand it and cry. The only thing I wanted to do was pick up the Walkman I had left in my locker and get back to my mum. But then my father came into the bathroom. I squeezed my eyes shut. He must have scattered the guys. They ran out of the bathroom with a rhinestone. My father grabbed my face and yelled that I was nothing like my mother and my sister. I got angry and pushed him to the wall with all my might. Dad hit the mirror with his back and it shattered. He fell to the floor. Didn't you fight back? But that's not enough, son. You have to be stronger. I went to get my sister. And where is she? She ditched us and took off. She's at your house. She came to get her things. I'll pick her up when we'll leave. Don't you dare. Dad couldn't get up. He hurt his leg. I took the car keys from him and discreetly dropped the keys on my way out of the bathroom from Bud's car. I drove Dad's car to his house and waited. Dad arrived about 10 minutes later in a classmate's car, whose dad was the local sheriff. Great, everything was going according to my plan, my revenge plan. I waited for my father to get out of the car, then sent a message to 911. My lame father came into the house and said that now I was screwed, that he was going to blow up my sister, me and our mother. Fuck you. What did you say? I won't take any more humiliation, beatings and intimidation from you. I'm sick of it. Tell it to your friends. They're the ones who prank you. That's why you're afraid to fight back. Not because of that, but because you were beating me all the time. My sister who ran away. My mother who put up with you. But it won't happen again. And how quickly did you come? Oh no, that you stole the sheriff's son's car. You ungrateful puppy. I want to raise you to be a man. That's the only way you'll learn to be a real man like me. Who says you're a man, dad? You said you were a snot. Say it to my face. A man and a bum are two different things, just so you know. And if I come near you, it's only to spit in your face and step on your wounded leg. Do you want some? That's it. I've had it with you, puppy. Dad ran at me, and that's when the cops burst into the house. They heard everything on the phone I left on the table. The sheriff quickly arrested my dad and took him away. Well, what about my sister? It's okay. I just wanted to lure my dad into his house to get him out of there and get him behind the wheel of Bud's car. Now he was looking at a lot of jail time. Well, what about Bud? After hearing from his father, he stopped touching me and bullying me, said he was ashamed and that he was even afraid of me. Well, he's right, because I'm not going to keep quiet anymore. And also... I have a plan B, in case I get hurt. Am I right? Support the likes if you guys agree with me. And also, tell me situations when you've been hurt or your loved ones. How did you respond or put up with it? Maybe you have a better idea of what I would do. I'm interested in your opinions. So I look forward to hearing them in the comments. Thank you all. Oh, and a big hello from my mum to everyone. Tell me guys, do you like my story? Write your opinion about it in the comments under the video. Don't forget to give likes, share the video with your friends and subscribe to the channel.